Hello and welcome to chapter 3 of the Eggplant Performance Tutorial Series. In this chapter we're going to look at script recording and we're going to be recording some of the scripts we mentioned in, in the last chapter uh, for NopCommerce. Now before we continue I just want to point out that uh, this chapter is specifically talking about uh, web script recording. So we do have different recording options available. Uh, there is a Citrix recorder for example. Uh, we're not going to be talking about that one so if you are interested in Citrix recording you'll have to check out the later chapter for that. So in order to uh, create a recording we first need to get ourselves set up in Eggplant Performance Studio. Uh, so we'll be covering uh, some of that as well. So without further ado, let's uh, begin by launching the tool. So uh, assuming everything installed OK, you should be presented with a few desktop shortcuts for the applications that we want to launch. So the one we're interested in initially is the Studio component. Now I've already uh, got a workspace and project set up here, uh, so it loads that uh, project straight away. You can see here I've, I've got a project here called Knob Commerce, uh, but for the sake of uh, this tutorial series I just want to start completely from scratch. Uh, so the first time you launch Studio you'll see uh, a dialog very similar to this one where you can define where you'd like to store this uh, workspace. Uh, so I'm going to go ahead and put this inside a new folder here. And within this folder is where I'm going to store my workspace. And I'm going to call it Nobcommerce Tutorial Series and hit OK. And now I've switched into that workspace. So you'll notice that Studio um, has two buttons here that allow you to switch between uh, the workspace and the project. Now the workspace uh, is used to contain uh, things that you might use repeatedly across multiple different projects and where each project is typically uh, all of the uh, assets related to a particular application. So the workspace is a bit more generic, you, you'll probably reuse um, things that you define in your workspace, uh, one of them, one of those items being the injectors. So your injectors are the machines that are actually responsible for generating the load. Uh, by default we, we ship with uh, a local host injector which refers to this machine, so that, that's talking about my laptop. So I can use my laptop to generate load, but over time, and depending on the size of a performance test you're going to run, you might need more injector capacity. So, And you'll likely reuse those injectors uh, for different applications applications that you're testing. I um, won't go into too much detail about the workspace for now, uh, except that you know there'll be a workspace um, regardless of, of what you do in the tool. And you'll notice that right now there hasn't been a project created yet, so one of the first things I'll need to do is to create a new project. And I'm going to keep it simple and just call it not commerce. Uh, that's the application that we want to test, so it makes sense that we call the project overall uh, not commerce as well. Okay, so that creates our skeleton structure of uh, what a project consists of. So you'll see all of these different folders here. They all refer to different uh, aspects of, of designing a performance test. So uh, data sources, that's where eventually uh, we'll have some test data that'll be available uh, to our scripts, uh, to our virtual users in effect. Uh, but we won't worry about that for now. We'll definitely uh, need to worry about that soon though. Uh, uh, like I said, we're going to be focusing on uh, creating recordings in this session, so I'm not going to delve into too much detail on these other things. Uh, the rest are pretty easy to figure out. You obviously end up with a script that will be generated from a recording. You would then uh, eventually have multiple scripts that you might want to combine into some kind of a workflow uh, that sets out which sequence your script should run in. And then eventually from a workflow you would generate a test. Okay. Uh, so whenever you select each of these folders, uh, the options on the menu change slightly. Uh, for recordings, um, you can also right-click any of the folders to see those options, uh, but for recordings, the one we're mostly interested in is the new recording functionality. So as part of creating a recording, you do need to give it some kind of a name. 
uh, I'm just going to uh, call this one test recording for now. Uh, and then you have some options about how you want to uh, create that recording or what recorder you want to use in order to uh, create the recording. Uh, so in most cases, uh, if you're testing um, web content, you'll want to use the proxy recorder. The reason uh, why you'd want to use a proxy recorder over the other option here, which is the web network recorder, is because the proxy recorder allows you to uh, decrypt HTTPS. So HTTP, uh, it's either going to be um, normal plain HTTP, in which case the traffic isn't encrypted on the wire. Uh, so you'll be able to see HTTP traffic just by looking at the packets uh, going through your network card. But any HTTPS traffic will actually actually be in encrypted, so you, you won't be able to make any sense of it. Uh, the only way to make sense of it is uh, effectively by performing a man-in-the-middle attack. So uh, this is uh, uh, a way of uh, intercepting the traffic, uh, whereby uh, you issue a certificate uh, that allows you to um, effectively uh, listen in on that conversation between uh, your web browser and the server that you're communicating with. So uh, the other option here, Web Network Recorder, uh, is actually then looking at the network card as opposed to intercepting between the, uh, the client and the server. Uh, but at that point, as I just said, you wouldn't be able to decode HTTPS traffic, uh, so you can only really use it uh, to uh, create recordings from HTTP traffic. So I'll just switch this back to the web proxy recorder and hit next. I now get the choice of uh, which application I want to launch along with the recorder. Now, in most cases, again, this will be a browser, uh, but you may at times uh, want to uh, launch something else. You might have a rich client uh, that uh, effect that ha happens to communicate over HTTP behind the scenes. Uh, you may be able to record that traffic, and so you do have the option of specifying uh, your own custom application executable that you want to launch, uh, or you could even start recording without launching anything at all. And so in that scenario, uh, Eggplant Performance will capture any traffic uh, that goes through the system proxy. You can even record external devices. Uh, usually this, uh, this means mobile devices. If that mobile device is connected to the same network as the controller machine, uh, you can tell uh, the Wi-Fi connection on that mobile device uh, to go through a proxy, and that proxy server will be the proxy recorder that's listening on, on this machine. But to keep it simple for now, we're just going to be uh, simulating, uh, you know, wanting to record traffic from an application that's hosted on the internet, and so we just want to use a normal browser. Now, if you use Internet Explorer, uh, you'll be given the option here to uh, delete its uh, cache automatically, so it'll delete cookies and, and any cached files that might already be on your system. Um, usually that's that's a good practice approach. Uh, you want to uh, create recordings where you are in effect simulating a uh, completely new user to the site, and so you're not already half logged in uh, as a result of there being a cookie uh, in, in your on your machine. Uh, in my case, uh, Internet Explorer was calling, causing a little pop-up to appear on, on, the, on the system under test I was browsing to, telling me to update. Uh, that annoyed me, so I'm going to use something else. I'm just going to use good old Google Chrome. But that does mean I don't have this automatic uh, cache clearing uh, option here available to me, so I'll need to perform that step manually. The rest of this dialogue uh, is more or less just telling you what's going on behind the scenes. Uh, we're going to be starting the proxy server on port 9090. Uh, that is something you can change if there's already something running on that port. Uh, so um, you can also specify uh, credentials, uh, username and password, uh, if you're having to authenticate with a proxy server or even the web server itself. Uh, so if, if that's the case, then you should uh, pre-populate that information here before you actually launch the browser. I'm pretty much ready to go, so I'm going to uh, go ahead and start recording. So at that point, two things should happen. We have the proxy recorder dialog itself showing up here, as well as the browser that we're wanting to use in order to reach the site. 
Now, if you've been uh, paying close attention, you'll have noticed that uh, this request counter is incrementing as, as I'm uh, speaking. So uh, that's as a result of the browser, uh, Chrome in this case, already um, communicating with uh, Google servers in order to perform various tasks. Uh, you can see what those requests are by hitting the More button and going into this Requests tab. Uh, this is all stuff to do with, uh, with Google and Chrome. Um, you know, uh, it's traffic that we're not interested in. It's got nothing to do with NOP commerce, so really we want to filter this stuff out. Uh, don't worry about uh, stuff being in your recording uh, as you're creating it. Uh, once the recording's finished, you'll be able to filter out uh, all of the other hosts that aren't really part of your test at all. So I'm going to ignore that for now. Uh, if it was your first time launching this dialog, you might also see some message about installing a, a certificate. Uh, so in order to capture HTTPS traffic, uh, that certificate needs to be on your system. I've already installed it, uh, but basically if, if you want to repeat the process, I mean, you'll, you'll see a, a screen uh, sim similar to this one. Uh, this one here, in fact, where we want to install the certificate. All you have to do is hit yes, and it should hopefully complete successfully. Uh, if you're in a domain, a domain environment, uh, you might not have sufficient privileges to install a root certificate, in which case you might need to speak to uh, an infrastructure admin uh, to ensure that you're able to perform this step. Uh, without it, you will not be able to decode HTTPS, and so um, you know if your site's running under HTTPS, which it likely is, uh, then you wouldn't be able to record it. So it's definitely an important step to be able to install that certificate. Uh, you can clear anything that's been captured up up until this point as well. Um, you know, it doesn't really matter. Like I said, you can filter this stuff out after the fact. Anything you're not interested in, but for now, I'll just you know reset things. So all I have in here will be my first transaction. That's typically uh, the name I, I give to the very first transaction. You're typically going to be browsing to a home page. Uh, you might want to call it browse to knob commerce or, or something else. As long as you can tell what that transaction was when you're later looking at your results, uh, then that's fine. Again, some traffic going on. I'm just going to ignore it completely for now and set the transaction. So at this point, any requests that happen uh, will be logged as uh, being part of the browse to homepage transaction. So I can just go into my uh, address field here. Oh. And before I forget, I do need to clear the cache. Uh, so I'm just going to quickly do that here. Uh, so it's cookies and cached images and files that I'm most concerned about. I'll do this since the beginning of time. And that should ensure that I'll appear as a completely new user. Uh, again, lots of stuff here. I'm not too concerned about that. So I'm just going to go ahead and type in uh, my URL. So there we go. That's it, and hit enter. So there we go, there's the extent of all of the traffic to knob commerce, starting from request number 25 onwards. Uh, and now it's pretty much doing the same as what uh, I'd already done. So uh, at this point, I should probably consult my, uh, uh, my test plan. Uh, so if you were watching chapter two, you would have caught a glimpse of this. Uh, so the test plan, uh, tells me what uh, scripts I want to create and obviously if I want to work with scripts I'll need recordings so I basically want to record uh, these different steps here. I'm going to keep it simple for now in this recording and just do the login and the logout uh, just to keep it short and sweet. Uh, so one of the first things I want to do is first browse to uh, the login page So I'll set that as my transaction name. And uh, a returning customer. Uh, filling in these fields here, uh, this is just a web form. And so it doesn't actually incur a client server request until I hit login. So I can type in uh, freely in here. Here's a user I've created before. Hopefully still exists. And now make sure I put in my submit login transaction here and click login. Here we go. I appear to be successfully logged in. There's no longer a login button. Uh, instead, there's a logout and it's referencing my account name up here. And so now I can just do the logout. 
that's it, we're back to an unlogged in home page. And now all I need to do is I can either stop the recorder here or close the browser. Uh, the, the recorder should pick up that the browser had, has exited, so I'll just close everything down and Studio recognizes that the re recording is complete. Now, normally once uh, you've got a recording complete, uh, you do probably want to perform this step too, where you're saying which host you're actually interested in. So uh, I've done this previously, and so it's already recognized that I'm uh, interested in only traffic that went to NobCommerce. So, you know, to begin with, your list will look like this. You'll need to find the host that you were uh, actually browsing to and make sure you hit include selected. So the default policy is to, uh, to operate a whitelist. And so only requests to this host will be accepted. Any other host will not be included in the resulting script from this recording. OK. And so the next step, uh, you know, I can view what was recorded, all the recorded information, and the default option is to actually go ahead and generate a script from this uh, uh, from this recording as part of this uh, process. Um, this is what the recording itself looks like. If I if I just focus on the NobCommerce traffic, we can see here is our browse to homepage transaction. Uh, these are all the HTTP requests that took place during that transaction. Uh, we have our login transaction here, uh, uh, sorry, browsing to the login page. Uh, here we see this is actually a post request. This arrow indicates that it resulted in a redirect. Um, I can see uh, the credentials I used to log in over here. Uh, I can see the request and response headers as well. Uh, so I can see here that I was given some uh, a few cookies as a result of logging in. That makes sense. I can also see the actual HTML uh, source of, of the uh, request uh, responses. So obviously it helps knowing a bit about HTTP at this point. Uh, uh, we will be referring to this recording or the information displayed in this recording uh, as we prepare our script uh, to get it ready for uh, our performance test. So we'll come back to this and, and, and talk more about uh, what is what is going on uh, when the need arises. But for now, uh, that was a short introduction to how on, on how to uh, set up your very first eggplant performance workspace and project, as well as uh, get a recording done. The next chapter will be looking uh, more closely at the actual script generation process, uh, including things like generation rules. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you again soon.